In this lecture, we go into more details of the Bohr's model, the orbits and the kinetic and potential and total energy in a certain orbit. However, Bohr's model mostly talks about the electron orbits and their energies, does not go into the nucleus, while Rutherford had said that there is a small nucleus which is positively charged. So inside the nucleus we have neutrons, then we have the concept of mass number, that is number of neutrons plus number of protons inside the nucleus and atomic number is just the number of protons. So we will see isotopes, isobars and isotones depending on what is the mass number and the atomic number of the same element or maybe different elements and how they represent different chemical and physical characteristics. Welcome to the portals of real learning. Don't skip, listen carefully right till the end. Continuing with the Bohr model, we saw what this model is. All electrons move around the nucleus in circular orbits. These orbits are stationary, that is, they don't lose energy. The electron does not go and crash onto the nucleus. Electrons in higher orbits have more energy. So if it absorbs an energy from a lower orbit, it will jump to the higher orbit. And if it de-excites, then it will release an amount of energy in the form of an EM wave and go back to a lower energy level. Maximum number of electrons in an orbit is 2n squared, where n is the orbit number. The smallest orbit is n equal to 1. Then we saw the limitations. And we saw that the correct model of the atom is quantum mechanical in nature, and there's a Heisenberg's uncertainty principle as well. Nevertheless, we stay with Bohr's model, although it is very approximate, but at least it gives you some insight. It is not entirely wrong also. So at this level, we stay with Bohr's model. The shells are named n equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, or k, l, m, n, etc. The total energy of the k shell is the least. The smallest orbit will have the least energy. As you go outward, the energy increases. And I'm talking about the total mechanical energy, that is kinetic plus potential. Max number of electrons in a shell is 2n square, and electrons will fill up energy slots starting from the lowest n, then go higher. The size of an atom. What is the size? It is based on the radius of the outermost shell and it is of the order of one angstrom unit which is 10 to the power minus 10 meters. We know the charge on an electron minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs. Mass of an electron you should know. 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kilograms. The nucleus is the center of the atom and contains protons and neutrons. Collectively, those are called nucleon. Nucleon is a particle within the nucleus. The size of the nucleus is very small compared to the size of the atom. This is of the order of 10 to the power minus 14 meters, whereas the size of the atom is of the order of 10 to the power minus 10. The charge on a proton is positive and the same as that on an electron. The mass of a proton, you should only remember that it is 1840 times the mass of an electron. The charge on a neutron is zero and the mass of a neutron is a little bit higher, 1.6726 versus 1.6749 into 10 to the power minus 27 kg. So, neutron has nearly the same mass as proton but slightly higher. So atomic number and mass number, let's learn about that. We have electron, proton and neutron. The symbol is E, P and N. The charge we saw minus, plus and zero and the mass we saw. We have tabulated the charge and the mass. Now 
Atomic number Z is number of protons in the nucleus and therefore it is also equal to the number of electrons outside the nucleus. And the chemical properties are determined by Z. That is the logic behind ordering of the periodic table. Mass number A is the number of nucleons. That means A is equal to number of protons plus number of neutrons. Let me call it N. That is mass number. So N is A minus Z. Number of neutrons N is A minus Z. And the representation of the atom is written as A Z X. That X is the chemical symbol. Now that chemical symbol is based on the Z. If you change the Z, that element changes. If you look at the nucleus, if there are Z electrons, then the total charge on the nucleus is plus Z times E, where E is the charge on a proton. 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb and plus ZE. Now, let's look at some atoms. Hydrogen, helium and sodium. Hydrogen is the simplest atom. The nucleus consists of a single proton. There are no neutrons. And therefore the Z, atomic number Z, is number of protons, 1. And the mass number A is number of nucleons, which is protons plus neutrons, 1. So we write it as A, Z, X. A is 1, Z is 1, and X, the chemical symbol, is H. If you talk of helium, it has two protons and two neutrons. Therefore, the Z is 2 and the A is 4. And 4 to HE. Looking at sodium, 11 protons and 12 neutrons. So, Z is 11 and a is 12 plus 11, 23. Hence, 23, 11 Na. In a chemical reaction, it is a change in number of electrons. It is an, a reaction at the electronic level, not at the nuclear level. But if there is a nuclear reaction, the chain is a number of nucleons and the energy that is required or released is a million times more than in a chemical reaction. In a nuclear reaction, the total A and Z before and after is conserved. Before, whatever was the situation, and afterwards, the total A and Z are conserved. Now let's talk of isotopes, isobars, and isotones. Isotope. Atoms of the same element. Same element means Z must be the same. As we mentioned earlier, if you change the Z, you are changing the chemical symbol. You are changing the element itself. The periodic table is arranged by Z. So atoms of the same element will have the same Z, but different mass number. Different mass number means the number of neutrons is different. They differ only in the number of neutrons, that is A minus Z. Therefore, they have the same place in the periodic table because it is arranged by Z. And hence, the chemical properties are the same. Usually, in nature, we find isotopes of an element in varying proportions with one particular type of isotope more abundant than the others. Now, isotopes can be unstable or stable. Unstable means they will decay into something else. That is called radioactivity. And these isotopes are of great industrial and medicinal use. Let's look at some examples. Hydrogen has got three isotopes. And we are talking at the nuclear level. Okay, this discussion is at the nuclear level. That is, we are talking of A and Z. The nucleus of hydrogen contains only a proton and that is called protium, symbol is 11H. Deuterium, the nucleus is called deuteron, has got a neutron in addition. 
As we said earlier, the Z must not change. There was one proton, there should be only one proton. For hydrogen, Z is one. So all the isotopes will have only one proton. If you add neutrons, then you're going to create isotopes. So deuteron is one neutron added to the nucleus. So A becomes two, but the Z is still one. Then there's tritium or triton where two neutrons are added. So A becomes three and Z is still one. Then you look at carbon. The number of protons are six, six, six. But neutrons are 6, 7, 8. So accordingly, the A is 6 plus 6 here. The A is 6 plus 7 here. And the A is 6 plus 8 here. Chlorine. Protons are 17. So 17, 17. But in one isotope, it is 18 neutrons. and the other one, it is 20 neutrons. So A here is 17 plus 18, 35. And A here is 17 plus 20, 37. Just some examples of isotopes. Now, what are isobars? Atoms of different elements. That means different Z. But mass number is the same. The Z is different, but A is the same. So they will again differ in A minus Z. And they also differ in Z. And therefore, in the number of electrons as well. Take an example, 23 sodium and 23 magnesium. The A is the same, but the Z is different. So that means the number of protons in sodium is 11, the number of protons in magnesium is 12. And A is the same, so number of neutrons is A minus Z, 23 minus 11, 12 here. And here it is 23 minus 12, 11 here. So number of protons and number of neutrons, they are both different, but the sum of proton and neutron is the same. Then we call it isobar. Finally, isotone. Atoms of different elements but same number of neutrons this time, right? So Z is different, but A minus Z is the same. Example, 23, 11 sodium and 24, 12 magnesium. The number of protons are different, Z is different, but the number of neutrons is the same. Hence the A will be different. So to summarize, we have A, Z and A minus Z. A means nucleons, total nucleons, Z means protons and A minus Z means neutrons or N. In an isotope, what is same is Z. So we are talking of atoms of the same element. In isobars and isotopes, we are talking of atoms of different elements because Z is different. In the case of isobar, A is the same. And in the case of isotone, N is the same as in this example. So that brings us to the end of the discussion of the atomic structure in terms of the electrons and their energy levels, the Bohr model, etc. But we are not done yet with the atom. Now we look at the nucleus and some nuclei are unstable and they spontaneously decay into something else, releasing a lot of energy. And that is called radioactivity. That will be the topic of the next session.